the Fermi paradox uh, could be used okay. as um, argument of evidence that humans might be the first life, intelligent life, and that life on Earth might be the first life. It's not proof, right? But someone who believes that could use the Fermi paradox to argue that. And so I'll, for the listeners who don't know, the Fermi paradox is a mystery, a paradox, a mystery, enigma, right? We have a very large number of planets in the universe that have liquid water. And one would think that perhaps where you have liquid water and other atoms, you should be able to have life every so often. And then further, one might think that where you have life, you have intelligent life that's capable of discovering physics and using physics to create technologies that would make manipulations in the electromagnetic spectrum. Like okay. I Love Lucy episodes broadcast, uh, you know, 50 years ago are manipulations of an electronic or artificial sort to mm. the EM spectrum that somebody a long distance away could pick up. So anyway, back, you know, 40 or so years ago, Carl Sagan and many scientists convinced Congress to fund NASA with a very large amount of money to do the SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Right. And a part of their, uh, their argument was along the Fermi Paradox line of thinking, which is well, there absolutely must be life out there because the universe is so big and there's so many planets with water. And so they looked and they listened in countless billions of directions yeah. and distances uh, in both time and space for the better part of the half, last half century. And, you know, recently some of the, you know, scientists involved with the original SETI programs say that we're just shocked. It's so quiet out there in the electromagnetic spectrum in terms of artificial signals that you can hear a pin drop and it is as though we are the first technologically advanced you know, life form in the universe, we did not expect this. So we recently came out with this paper called the Self-Simulation Interpretation of Quantum Mechanics. What do we think this has to relate to this topic in terms of uh, UFOs, in terms of time travel coming backwards in time? If we might be the only human, if humans might be the only uh, life out there in the universe right now, then how could we be seeing these UFOs? Yeah. Let's break that apart a little bit and, um, and talk about the Fermi paradox made some assumptions, right? Okay. They assumed there are a lot of planets with water. Turns out that is a true assumption. And when they made those assumptions 40 years ago, they didn't know as much ab about observational astrophysics as we've got today in the post-Hubble world, right? So they were right about that. Okay. But one of the assumptions that they made is a mistake about what evolutionary biology does and what its objective is, right? Not saying it has a conscious mind and has an objective like we do, but biological systems tend to have objectives and a biosphere, right, on a planet is in the broadest sense, a living organism, right? An interactive, self-adjusting, self-regulating system. And systems can have something that is like an objective. They want to persist over time and they adjust to do that. So is a biosphere that has a lot of animals like this one, is it the goal of the biosphere for its self-regulating survival to crank out an animal that has incredibly powerful abstract thinking ability, like humans? The ability to discover the fabric of reality and mathematical physics uh, and then create machines that can manipulate the electromagnetic spectrum, like radios, because that's what the Fermi paradox is about, is they're, they're looking, they're presuming that evolutionary biology uh, sort of climaxes at intelligence like humans. But that's wrong. Biologists don't tend to think that. So I'm gonna give a couple evidences that humans may be the first high consciousness life in the universe, and you guys could let me know what you think. So first of all, it's hard to believe that humans would be the first, or that Earth, right, would be the first uh, place where life occurred in the universe. Now, somewhere it occurred first, right? right? And if 
animals there were smart enough to wonder if they were the first. There should be another animal smart enough to say, well, how arrogant you are to presume we are the first. And yet they, in that case, they would be the first, right? Because we're defining them as the first. Yeah. So it could be the first place life emerged, but probably not. And that gets to the issue that I was mentioning about the objective or the behavior of evolutionary biology. So we have 10 million different animals on this planet right now, from microbes to butterflies to rhinoceroses. And in the fossil records, we have implications that there were about another 90 million species that came and went. So that's 100 million species, and those span one third the age of the universe. So it's over 4 billion years, and the universe might be about 14 billion years old, let's say, and so about four point, you know, four and a half billion years of, or four billion years of life here. So you got one third the age of the universe on this planet, 100 million different animals, and only one that has achieved such grotesquely extreme, out of balance magnitude of abstract thinking ability that we have the ability to tell stories invent science, collectively send people to the moon and to mo equipment to Mars, right. uh, discover quantum field theory, and why would it be only one? The whole team at Quantum Gravity Research needs your help. We're asking for $1 a month. Please click the link in the description below to join our giving circle.